Bling. We are the lottery for kids. However, with Bling, you do not win money, you win prizes instead. I'm James Pack, I'm 17 years old. I'm John Lee Wingo and I'm 18. We are both seniors at Woodlawn High School and we have a great passion for Fling because when we were little, when we would receive the little scratch-offs in the mail or our parents would go buy a scratch-off, we would love to scratch them off. It was so much fun. How Fling works. You're going to go to a store and you're going to buy a Fling ticket. You scratch the ticket off and if you get any image three times in a row, you win. We have three images. The first image is a teddy bear. If you get three teddy bears in a row, you win a small prize. If you get a race car three times in a row, you win a medium prize. And if you get the fling logo three times in a row, you get the large prize. If you win a large prize, you have to go, you will flip your ticket to the back and it'll have an address and your name and you're going to give it back to the store and you will receive your prize in two to four weeks. If you win a small or a medium prize, you're going to give the store attendant your ticket back and they're gonna re you're going to receive the prize right then and there. The difference between winning a small and medium prize and a large prize, with a small and medium prize you can pick your prize at the store. If you win a large prize, it varies month to month on what the prize is going to be. And we're going to let you try that out right now. Go ahead and scratch them. Hope we get three flings. <laughs> you will. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got three teddy bears. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes. You're going to be the winner. <laughs> Is, uh, it costs us four cents per cardstock, and then two cents for the scratch material, and then fifty dollars worth of assets per store. So that's the prizes that they have on hand, keep on hand. And, and what we make out of it is a dollar per ticket, and we have it where if one out of every ten tickets sold, there will be a winning ticket. So it costs us in total sixty dollars for the ten tickets to make the tickets, and then the one dollar because of the prize that goes with the ticket, and then because of that we make eight dollars and forty cents for our profit. We have a five hundred and twenty-five percent markup, which is huge. Our target audience is uh, individuals seventeen and under because they cannot legally play the lottery and you know it's more fun for the kids but it is open to all ages just for those who want to just not risk so much into an actual lottery but just to, just to play. Our competitive of market is um, claw machines or other winning prize machines that can be our only competitors as of right now. Social media. This week we have put our fling page up and we have gotten 19 likes, um, 651 posts reached, 12 shares all this week. And we plan to extend our 
fling social media out into Instagram and Twitter and everything else. Um, why we should win? Fling should win because in 2016, the world practically revolves around entertainment. Whether it's a game on your smartphone or just simply scratching off a ticket. Um, Fling, we really want to be a profitable business that makes a huge income over a long period of time, while also providing people with great enjoyment of scratching off a ticket and winning a prize. Scratch a fling. Bring the fling. You can win. Anything. From a bite. To a kite. Three in a row. That's the lie. Get the prize. No compromise. The gift is yours. Cheaper than stores. All you have to do is scratch. Easy peasy. No strings attached. <laughs> Let's, Let's fling. fling. <laughs> <laughs> Concerned that you've had in, in 12 shares and not bad, and 61, 651 post reach, that's a good number, but um, such a small percentage of likes on those reaches? <laughs> well, in terms of our product, is it really, it's like white out there, but also we. Okay, we are the only thing that's like us. Like no one has ever heard of this before at all. So when we're introducing a new product, it's going to be kind of hard to get it out there in a short amount of time. Okay. Because what's going through my mind, would say more from the, the parent side of me, is the question as to whether or not I want to teach my child to play the lottery. Yes. So is that what's going through the, the mind of those, you know, that, that's, that many people? That's is possible. That you're not getting likes on your page? Yeah, that's completely possible. Um, however, we kind of look at it look at it as the same concept of a claw machine. So, who is your true target market? Um, people under the age of seventeen or eighteen. So, where are you going to be like selling these tickets at? Like, where we're, where could I get one? We're thinking about just starting it locally. We don't want to start it at a Walmart or anything huge because we're not looking to pay them to hold a fling ticket. We just want the fling ticket to have customers come in be the reason for that. So, like, wh if I wanted to buy one right now, where would I buy it? Like, is it um, going to be at a Shell Station? Is it going to be Walmart? You could Walmart? definitely buy it at a Shell Station or a local grocery store or something like that. Right. And what, kind, what kinds of prizes are you going to have? Because you've, you've got a huge you know, I don't know how small, uh, how young of an age that you're expecting um, for a child to be interested in this. And in that, in that situation, if it's a young child, you're more targeting the the parent, you're targeting the child in hopes that the child will beg the parent to yes. buy the ticket. So it's kind of a combination target there. But say for a teenager, um, you know, what kinds of prizes are you going to have that would entice a teenager to stick a dollar in that machine? For a large prize, it would be like an Xbox or a Wii. A medium prize would be like maybe a Brat doll or like a Barbie doll. And then a small prize would go from like a pencil to a teddy bear to a small race car or something of that. Okay, and what were, what were the statistics and chances of winning again? Um, one out of ten. So one card is a winner. We'll, we'll produce ten cards, and one of those cards will be a winner. Can you go back to your like uh, financial page, financial slide? Because then you say that there's $50 in assets, $50 worth of prizes per store. So a Wii, I don't think it's $50. I think it would be more around like $300. So if you're going to sell, you know, if you're trying to make them buy this ticket, but you said you had fifty dollars. There's a little bit of, I don't know. So you're giving away maybe a wee in one in every hundred yeah. thousand tickets. <laughs> <laughs> it would be like one in every thousand, pretty much. It'd be a greater number. Because because I would think that would be concerning if you're if you know for a <coughs> fifteen or sixteen year old to stick a dollar in yeah. a machine for a chance to win a I don't know. 50 cent stuffed bear. Yep. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was excited about this. But. <laughs> I think they also said that um, a lot of ticket items are being sent mail to you. The stores are only keeping the stock of the fun little items. Gotcha. Right? That's what you said yes. earlier. Oh, okay. This is a great prop. I liked, I really enjoyed scratching off uh, 
I had to vote <laughs> Something tells me you might be competitive. Uh, uh, but for, for those of us who, who don't always read the directions on the card, you, you might consider, you know, some lines going across yep. or diagonal that would show me I got to have it in a line. Yeah. So. <laughs> So have you thought about like expanding this to like a different sort of store? Like you said, maybe a Shell station or you know somewhere local. But you know, have you thought about you know going to a bigger city where there's like entertainment places? Because you said entertainment's what everybody's doing. So have you thought about like where should you put this? We have thought about that. We have also thought about making like a lottery machine, and where you can just put the money in and you get the lottery ticket right then and there. So we have definitely thought about putting it in a bigger vicinity just because okay. we would make more money that way. Because I'm thinking like, you know, there's lots of arcades and like there's like a Dave and Buster's, you know, if you put it there, maybe it's you know, more likely that people are going to play it just because those are the type of people who are spending money on these games anyways. Yes. Yeah, have you factored in the cost of those machines? No, we have not done that yet. Slide what are your future plans with um, social media? We are going to add in Twitter and Instagram and we are going to try, that's going to be our advertising, so we're going to try and get it out there, get as many people to see it as possible. <laughs> nice. <laughs> How'd you make these? It's a trade secret. <laughs> 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 Good answer. Great answer. <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing it was more than six cents. <laughs> or the test cards. Yeah. <laughs> we will be buying in bulk, so. Yeah. It will be a lot cheaper. It always costs more. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the prototype. I'm just hung up on the fact that your target market, I mean, it is a gambling kind of thing that you're investing in, and the children, you're trying to teach them that at a really early age. But there are probably a lot of um, consumer segments out there that would buy these for their, for their, kid, for their kids. Um, some won't, but many that would. So if you can figure out a way to target market or find the venues that um, where where those consumer segments would most likely be available to purchase, then you might you might go gangbusters, you never know. Yeah, especially in an arcade or somewhere like that where they're putting money on machines anyway. Okay, hey, final questions? Okay, good job. Thank you guys.